this is Miss Alsamani. I want us to talk about this Hamlet essay. So I've got our topic sheet here. Um, so I want you guys to look on with me or if you need to print out your own topic sheet, go for it. Um, if you've not finished the Hamlet play, pause this and come back to it later because there are going to be some plot spoils as we discuss the topic options for this paper. So just want to make sure you guys don't have any of the endings spoiled for you. So, um, but with the plot spoil warning, I'm going to continue on. This type of essay argues a point of view about Hamlet, and you'll utilize quotes and summaries of scenes as evidence. So you want to have your textbook close by whenever you're writing this paper so that we can point out the specific sections that you're referring to in the play as you build your argument. Um, there is a difference in quoting drama compared to the short story or poem, um, so I just want to point that out at the beginning. I've got an example of a quote from a play within an essay. This is also on page 125 in your Seagull textbook, the one that was used for English 101. Um, Macbeth continues the vision theme when he says, quote, thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. So this quote is from Act 3, Scene 3, lines 96 through 97. So that's how you do the in-text citation when you quote from plays. Intake citation for plays must have the act, the scene, and the line numbers, and they need to be in Arabic numerals, um, which is just our regular numbers, and then they're separated by periods. So um, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to email me, or also there's that page 125 in the Seagull textbook as well. The rough draft is going to be due Monday, November 9th by midnight, and you'll submit that in discussions for peer review as usual. The final draft is due Wednesday, November 18th by midnight, and that's going to be in the week 14 content folder. Um, there are 100 points possible for this paper, and it's 20% of your final grade. The length of the essay should be about 800 words. That's the minimum. If you go over, that's fine as well. Just make sure you get to 800. Um, and that does count the works cited page that'll have Hamlet cited as well. For formatting, there's no surprise. It's 12 point Times New Roman font double space with MLA heading and style. If you need a reminder of the MLA heading, page 161 in your Seagull textbook has a really good example. Um, you'll also have to have a works cited page with Hamlet cited. Um, I pulled the citation from your textbook and I have it cited on the second page of this topic sheet. So all you have to do is use the one that's on the second page of the topic sheet. Since you do have a Word document that you can access, um, you can actually copy and paste it from that as well, so I'd recommend that. You won't need any outside sources, so you don't have to do any outside research for this. I just want your opinion about Hamlet. So no one else's opinion, no schmoop, no Sparks notes, um, definitely no Wikipedia. Like just this is your thoughts about the play. I know it was four hours worth of information, so I know you've got some ideas about something that you watched. So please just focus on your opinion about the play. Here are some topic ideas. Um, all of the topic ideas are based off Hamlet. I've had some students ask, oh, can I write about Romeo and Juliet or Macbeth or another Shakespeare play that they've written in the past? I want you to focus on Hamlet for this course. Um, hold on to those other ideas for maybe future literary courses you take, but for this class, I want us to focus just on Hamlet. Um, here are the topics specifically. What symbols are there in Hamlet? Remember, symbols are items that represent ideas. So obviously the skull in the graveyard represents death. Ophelia's flowers represent her, um, and you can interpret them as kind of fragile um, flowers die very easily. They can be drowned. Notice how Ophelia died. She drowned like a flower. Um, flowers also represent love and death. Um, we put flowers on graves, and we also have flowers at weddings. And so there are a lot of different ideas behind Ophelia's flowers. Um, the idea of poison, um, a lot of characters are poisoned in this play and you never see poison coming and just like a lot of the characters are not true um, to who they are out in the open, they have a lot of secrets and there's a lot of spying going on, the poison itself functions as like you don't really know if the sword is just a sword or if the drink is just a drink or even a nap in the garden can lead to death. So. Um, that's also a very prominent symbol in the play. There's a lot of other symbols in the play, but those are just some examples for you to pull from if you wanted to use those specifically. What is the conflict in Hamlet? Um, there are a lot of 
characters that are conflicted within the play, Hamlet being the most obvious, he's conflicted with his revenge plot. Um, there's also Laertes, Ophelia, um, even Claudius, you could argue, is conflicted because and whenever he prays, he feels guilty about murdering his brother. Um, so he's conflicted in his play for power. So, I mean, there's a lot of different angles you can go with with this topic, depending on which characters you want to focus on. The third topic option, choose a character in Hamlet and point out the character's motivation, what drives the character to action. Um, the characters are all motivated by different um, thought processes or personality types, and so depending on which character you're most intrigued by, you can really delve into what that character is motivated by. There are several themes within Hamlet. Pick one theme and point out how that theme drives the plot of the play. The most obvious theme in this play is revenge. Um, so many characters need to get revenge, especially by the end of the play. Another really common theme is love. Um, there's love between romantic love figures like Hamlet and Ophelia. Um, obviously, even Claudius and Gertrude do seem to love one another, even if it is born out of a really um, unnatural scenario. There's love between siblings, Laertes and Ophelia um, love one another. There's love between parents and children. So there's a lot of different angles you could take with the love theme as well. Um, there's the theme of death. Death surrounds a lot of the characters in this play, whether they're um, like Hamlet gets into the idea of death multiple times because he considers suicide. He gets into the idea of like what is after death and the afterlife. Um, obviously the ghost himself represents death as well and um, purgatory specifically. So I would say revenge, love, death, any of those themes are the most common. And if you think of a theme that I didn't mention, that's fine as well. And if you have questions about it, feel free to email me about it. Ophelia's character changes throughout the play. Describe how the Ophelia the audience meets at the beginning of the play is much different than the one in the play's conclusion. What changes her? I've gotten some very intriguing essays about her character specifically because she is an example of what's called the fallen woman. Um, that's a common literary trope where a woman starts off in good standing in her com community and then either through her choices or the choices of um, men around her, she falls from grace, whether that's her reputation takes a hit or she, um, in this situation, she falls off of her sanity. I mean, she really does lose her mind. And um, I've gotten some really interesting essays about why Ophelia and her life ends the way it does. And so if you're interested in her character, please feel free to write about her. Um, there are characters that experience similar situations in Hamlet to pick three characters and point out their similarities and their differences. I've gotten some that are very interesting, some essays about Hamlet, Laertes, and Ophelia, and all three of their reactions to their father's deaths because Hamlet lost his father and Laertes and, Ophel Laertes and Ophelia also lost um, Polonius. And so their reactions to the death of a parent are all very different um, and it's very easy to contrast them. Another really cool essay idea I got recently was um, the claim for the throne and how Claudius, Prince Hamlet, and Fortinbras all did different tactics to try to get to the throne of Denmark. Um, so that's another really cool idea. If you come up with another one, go for it, but there's so many um, different interlapping um, like plot devices that you can really overlap the different characters and what they're doing in the play itself. So let's move on to the next page. Notice there are 10 points taken off for every day late, so just make sure you turn in your final draft on time. All final drafts are going to be graded with the same grading rubric we use all the time in that getting started page. And it's also going to be scanned with anti-plagiarism software. So I mentioned earlier you don't need any outside sources for this essay. So as long as you, you only rely on your own opinion and cite the play, you will not be guilty of plagiarism. Um, I've got a little brainstorming outlining space if you need to use that to take notes on different ideas. And then notice I've got the works cited page done for you. You can copy and paste this into your paper and it will even count towards your word count. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask me any question. Um, notice that the rough drafts are due November 9th and final drafts are due November 18th. And this is our last essay of the course. so. Um, just know that as you're working on this one, it is the last major essay we have. And then after this, we really just have that little final quiz that I'll talk to you more about later. But 
this shouldn't be the last essay video we need so um, thank you so much for making it this far into the class. I've enjoyed teaching you all, and I look forward to reading your essays about Hamlet. Thanks. Bye.